Hey there, fella. What do you think of our governor, Nate Johns? Nate Johns? Why, that no good lying, backstabbing bastard, I'd like to see him horse whipped. <laughs> Why you ask, friend? Need to make sure I had the right man. Would you care to take a quick look at a couple photographs of you coming out of a fine place of not much repute? What? Ah. Uh. Ah, uh, as I was saying, uh, before I was so rudely interrupted, Nate Johns is a fine, fine man and an even better governor. And I consider it an honor to call him my friend. <laughs> Wise man. Right, miss. What a pleasant surprise, Mr. Marston. An informer just told us some interesting news. Our mutual friend, Mr. Vanderlyn, is about to pay call on his bank manager. What do you say to having a little financial discussion with the fellow? This way. Let's get up on the roof. We'll have a clear shot at them from there. That door is the only way in and out of the building, so cover it tight. You see those horses to the left by the building across the street? Dutch's boys hitched them there. They'll have to run that way to make their escape. Don't start shooting until they're out in the open. If we spook them, they might retreat back and hole up inside. Don't shoot till I give you the signal. Keep your sights trained on that bank door. The law just gonna keep coming until you're done. Don't shoot till I give you the signal. Someone's coming out. He's unarmed. Hold your fire. Lord, the bastards I kill him! Open fire! Get the man at the window!
Winston, head into the bank with Hopkins and Manny. Get Dutch. Be careful. There may be some innocent people there. We can take them! Let's move! They'll cover the windows from up top! Marston, shoot the door open! Go in! Keep an eye out for civilians! You give our laws a bad name! I ain't gonna kill you again! Nice to see you, John. Hello, Dutch. How's Abigail? Well, I hope. Ain't seen her for a while. Because you've been chasing me? Let the woman go, Dutch. Of course. Of course. How's your little boy? He ain't so little now. No, he must be what? 15? 16? Doesn't time fly? Don't adjust. It's over, man. Of course. Of course. I surrender, John. You're the master now. I've been my master since you left me to die. We all make mistakes, John. I never claimed to be a saint, but equally, I never took you for an errand boy. Just trying to help my family, Dutch. By making compromises, we all have to. Now let her go. It's over. You want the girl, John? Huh? You always were the romantic sort. You know, gentlemen, this man here, oh, he married a whore. Used to ride with us. We all had her. Oh, but he married her. And you know that makes him a better man than us. He's a better man. Have the girl, John. Easy, Dutch. She's a parting gift from me. No! God damn! I don't see him! What the hell happened in there? This is your fault, Marston. You got a gun too, Sheriff. You waited too long. Next time, I'll just shoot the girl. That's enough. Come on, let's find the bastard. Get on your horses. I just Please saw Dutch make a run for careful it. In the future. Yeah, Abraham. Yeah. Best. Hey, what happened in there? We saw Vanderlyn escaping from some men. He stole off with the bank manager in an automobile. Let's just say, Dutch ain't gone and got himself safe. Killed some poor woman. There's an old logging camp further down this road. It's been abandoned for years. My guess is that's where they're headed. Come on, follow me. So that's the great Dutch. We're a role model. The man who made.
made you who you are? I guess so. Has he changed? No, still the same crazy bastard he turned into. How was it seeing him after all this time? Did he tug on your heartstrings? He kind of reminds me of you. A piece of shit who went and confused himself with God. Isn't that sweet of you? Now you must kill him. Your side is chosen. My side ain't chosen. My side was given. I'd kill you a hundred times before I killed Dutch. Option. I think we're finally reaching an understanding, Mr. Marston. Who the hell are you fellas anyway? Ballmen or army? We are neither, Mr. Marston. But I have the authority over both. You bastards can't ever give a straight answer, can you? That's Dutch's car! Hurry! Can't have that far! Where's Dutch, Marston? He got away. Uh, scared to shoot him? Too much to handle? When the opportunity presents itself, I'll put a bullet in him, don't you worry. Won't like myself for doing it, but I'll do it. Ah, good man, good man. You know, at the end of this, you'll probably get a medal. I know I shall. Excuse me, partner. I ain't getting fresh.
Professor! Oh, it's you, dear boy. Come in, come in, and shut the door. What's going on? You leaving? Yes, sir, yes, I am, sir. Do you know, do you know the thing? The thing that is vital, without which scholarship cannot proceed, sir? No, I don't. Not having a bullet in your flipping neck, sir. I am not cut out for this. No, I'm not cut out for this at all. <laughs> nope. They're fucking savages! Savages! I think we all are. Not me, sir. I'm from Connecticut. I'm a professor at Yale. I write books. I do not deserve to die out here. Where's my tincture? Oh, yes. <sighs> You okay, Professor? Oh, dandy, sir. Just dandy. Oh, oh. oh, great heavens above! Is that you, John? Hello, Dutch. <laughs> I think that's what they call two for the price of one out here in this wonderful place. Maybe so, Dutch. You and, and, and your friend there, the Professor? We're gonna kill the both of you. Why you wanna do a thing like that? I don't know. Sport, I guess. Fair enough. Oh. Why don't I come out there? We fight. Let the professor go and send your boys back to their families. Well, that, that sounds like a beautiful plan, John. Only problem is, my boy's here. They already lost their families a long time ago. We aren't thieves, John. <laughs> we're fighting for something a, a bit like you. Only we're fighting for an idea, not just for ourselves. That's beautiful, Dutch. You always were a fine speaker. I was. Now, would you kindly send that academic out here so we can show him what we really think about the art of anthropology? Please, sir, what are we going to do? I'm gonna hand you over to him and watch him tear you limb from limb. What? I'm just kidding. We're gonna run across the rooftops. Get you back to your ivory tower. Oh, thank you. Thank you, sir. Don't thank me. We're still here. Come on. <laughs> Good day, sir. Uh, madam. Look here, sir. What is the meaning of this, this outrage? You two stay down and shut up.
Come on! We can get to the roof this way! Do something! He's going to kill me! One more move, and he's a dead man! What do we do now? They've got us pinned down on both sides! This is getting intense! Stay quiet! I'll shoot you in a minute, McDougal. I think that's most of them. The coast looks clear. Come on, then! Let's make a break for it! The horses should be in an alleyway down here! My research is complete. Much as I thought, there's no civilizing this savage land. I could have told you that for nothing. Ah, but they'll give me a prize in New Haven for this. <laughs> well, they bloody better. Well, goodbye, Mr. Marston. <laughs> Best of luck, dear friend. So long, Professor. So long, sir.
What do you want, Marston? My family. I've done what you asked. <laughs> no, you haven't. This is the land of opportunity, and I gave you the opportunity to save your family, and you failed. How could I possibly reward you? Marston, you're a public menace. We should have had you killed. I wish you had. But since you didn't, where's my family? Oh, spare me the noble savage fall on the sword tripe, will you? Oh, boy, it's nauseating. You don't wish to be dead. You're an insignificant creature desperately clinging on to life like the rest of the scum in this town. I know, it's tough. You like Dutch. He's a charming fellow. He makes sense. He's like one of those nature writers from back east. Only he takes things a tiny little step too far. Rather than just loving the flowers and the animals and the harmony between man and beast, <laughs> he shoots people in the head for money and disagreeing with them. He's a goddamn killer. Now, I'm not a great intellect, but the metaphysical leap from admiring the flower to shooting a man in the head because I like the flower is a leap too far. So, I know it's easy. You see, we, me and Archer, we're the bad guys. We enforce the rules. Now, while the rules may not be perfect, they're really not so bad. Exactly. What's the alternative? Yeah. See, I'll tell you what the alternative is. It's not complicated. It's about one man and his gun versus another man. <laughs> sure. Civilization may be dull, but the alternative, Mr. Marston, is hell. And the way you enforce this civilization, this freedom for men to like or not like flowers, or whatever in God's name you were just talking about, is to kidnap a man's wife and son? Well, I know there's contradictions. I'm not going to lie to you. Yeah, as I said, I'm not a great intellect. Now, after the debacle with the army and the bank, we have to put Mr. Vanderlyn to rest ourselves. Will you help us? Do I have any choice? Now that you mention it, no. Then what was that pretty speech in aid of? I don't rightly know, but it sure felt good saying it. <laughs> Shall we, Mr. Marston? Let's go. See if we can put this to rest once and for all, shall we? What's the word, Captain? We spotted one of Dutch's men about an hour ago. I think he took the bait. Let's get in position, then. Have your men ready to run him down, if you have to. Dismiss!
ready to finish this, Mr. Marston? I guess so. Everybody stay alert. Targets on the horizon! Fire at will! Come on!
Well, Mr. Marston, it seems like your mentor, Dutch, no longer looks quite so kindly to his student. That man is insane. So it seems. I think we need to get him before sundown. As you say, Captain. Otherwise, he'll be gone again. And what if I say no? <laughs> now, before I shoot you myself, let me just point out the obvious. The one person we have left that can appeal to Mr. Vanderlyn is the last person we know who knows him. Your wife. That won't be necessary. Mr. Ross, Captain, let's go. <clears throat> Mount up, man! Let's move out! I can't believe Vanderlyn has built himself a fortress in the mountains. He's crazy, but he certainly ain't stupid. You've already seen that place, right? McDougal told me you went up there with that Indian chap. I've seen it all right. We'll be lucky to last five minutes with this many men. Governor Johns is going to be very pleased. Nate Johns? What's he got to do with any of this? Let's just say he has a vested interest in cleaning the filth out of this region. I don't think our old friend Dutch realizes what a great favor he has done us. Citing all this hate among the natives. Like you needed an excuse. What happens when you fraternize the savages? How could you ever follow a man like that? How could you ever follow a man like Ross? Vanderlyn is a psychopath, a murderer, and a rapist. Ross don't seem too different. Dutch was a good man once, a far better man than you. So what made him this way? I don't know. Bastards like you, seeing that things never change. I hope you're ready to finish this mess. Anything to get you sons of bitches off my back. There's always somebody watching, Mr. Marston. I thought you'd have gleaned that much by now. You think you're so clever, don't you? No, it's you! You thought you were clever. You thought you could just walk away from your own life. Make no mistake, we have been watching. Don't speak to me. You're really an ungrateful slug, Marston. All we need now is Father Christmas. Instead of punishing you for your crimes, we are giving you a chance to kill the men who betrayed you. You didn't have to punish my wife, too! Oh, please. She's hardly innocent. Don't you talk about her like that! Oh, I would never talk ill of dear Abby. Do you call her Abby or Abigail? I prefer Abby. Oh, I like the woman. A little rough for my taste, but very pleasant. I can't wait to put a bullet in your head! When will this be over? It's you who's been dragging it out, not us. We sent you to Fort Mercer with the simple task of killing Bill Williamson. Next time. You're running all over Mexico like a headless chicken. And now it's Dutch. He's the last one of your merry band, is he not? Then you can go back to your farm, or what's left of it. If need be, you can always send your wife back out to work. I hear she works hard. Go to hell! This old gang of yours just won't die easily, will it? I wonder how many deaths you are all responsible for. How much money you took from pockets of hard-working citizens. We did more for the people with the money we took than the damn government ever did. Good God! This flawed philosophy yours again. If you wish to argue the finer points of ethics, I suggest you learn to read first. And I suggest you learn how to shoot people in the front, not the back.
you're the one who's gonna kill him? Dutch? Yep, that's what they... You, blow that gate open. Move, soldier.
Right, Marston. We'll take two men with us. The rest will stay here and take care of the wounded. They'll plant charges at the gate. You and I'll provide the cover fire. All right, men. Blow that gate open. Get ready to hold off their fire, Marston. Hold them off! We need time to set the explosives! Say farewell. Sneaky one. Oh, stop above. doing that! It ain't worth it! alone. Looks like it's me and you, John. You should have stayed at home. You better follow me. That uncle shoots straighter than you. Somebody... God damn it! It's over, John. I ain't leaving here without you. You're just like me, John. You can't change who you are. I ain't like you. That's where you're wrong! Hello again, John. Hello, Dutch. We gotta stop meeting like this. Sure. I got a plan, John. You got a plan, Dutch. This is a good one. I don't doubt it. We can't always fight nature, John. We can't fight change. Can't fight gravity. We can't fight nothing. My whole life, all I ever did was fight. Then give up, Dutch. But I can't give up, neither. 
I can't fight my own nature. That's a paradox, John. You see? Then I have to shoot you. When I'm gone, they'll just find another monster. They have to. Because they have to justify their wages. That's their business. Our time has passed, John. So at the end, you didn't have the guts to shoot him. The man's dead, Ross. Sure. Can I see your gun? Hmm. Oh, trust me. It looks better in the report that way. Where's my family? Uh, your wife was killed in a prison riot last week. So, <laughs> I'm only joking, dear boy. They were sent back to that Scrabble ranch of yours in Beecher's Hope. They're quite safe and sound. They better be. Thank you, Mr. Marston, for everything. I know this wasn't easy for you, but I have to say, You've done your country proud. Yeah, exactly. See you around, John. Try to stay out of trouble. Come on, Archer. Let's go find somebody else we can annoy. Jack! Anyone here? Anyone home? 
Oh, darling. I never thought I'd see this day again. You no good hillbilly piece of shit! I thought you was dead! I thought you was dead, John, huh? Where you been? Where you been? You know where I've been, darling. You know! You saw Dutch, didn't you? Yeah, I saw him. And Bill? Yeah, I saw him too. And you didn't go back to him? I left that life. Just as you left yours. How'd they treat you? Oh, I can take care of myself, John. One guard got funny on me one time, but I wasn't so ladylike and he didn't try it again. Nor no one else. How's the boy? Oh, like you. And like me. Well, he's like a kid growing up without a father. That ain't fair. What is fair? Well, some trees flourish, others die. Some cattle grow strong, others are taken by wolves. Some men are born rich enough and dumb enough to enjoy their lives. Ain't nothing fair, you know that. We tried to change, I mean, ain't that what you're supposed to do? We did change. And it's over now. Jack! Jack, come here, boy. Hello, sir. Come here. How you been? Coyotes ate all the chickens and poachers took the cattle. I tried, Father. I tried. I know you did, son. I know. Well, don't you go blaming me, boy. Don't you go blaming me. I ain't blaming no one, old man, but since you're still alive, there's four mouths to feed. And no cattle. That's a nice way to greet somebody. Why don't I get to warm and tender embrace? Consider the fact I ain't put a bullet in you, your embrace, old man. You were supposed to look after the place. I did. Well, I did my best. Thing is, there was too many of them. Uh, I thought you was dead. I wasn't drinking. Hold your excuses until you figured out which one to use. Jack. Go get your bags packed, boy. We got work to do. We leave in the morning. Go on. Yes, sir. Where are you going? Well, it's getting kind of dark now, but in the morning we've got to go get ourselves some more cattle. We've got friends at McFarland's ranch. It's over in Hennigan's stead who can sell us some. Now, Abigail, I hope you learned to cook. <laughs> Yes, didn't I say, rather than some prison, they actually kept me incarcerated in a cooking school for young ladies. How do you do, sir? All right. We should get moving. Jack? I'm feeling fine, sir. We got a decent ride ahead of us. I've never been to Hennigan's stead. How do you know these ranchers? I met him while I was away. The McFarland's are good people. We need folks we can trust right now. 
I was sick and they looked after me. You sure got a lot of questions. I don't often get a chance to ask them. Was it a gentleman's complaint? What do they call it? The morning drip? Good God, boy, no! Where do you learn these things? Uncle told me about it. Well, he'd know, the dirty old fool. No, I just got weak for a while. Acted foolishly, got in trouble. Guess I was a little out of practice. Yeah. Hey, Paul! What? Where were you all that time? Where'd you go? What'd your mother tell you? She said it was some kind of important government business. That's about right. Some people thought I owed them some favors. Why did they take us away? Yeah. Paul, was it something to do with Mr. Dutch and Bill? Why you went away? Who told you that? Well, I kept hearing people say their names. That, that's all. Yeah, I caught up with Bill and Dutch. We had some old business needed settling. Well, where are they now? They're gone, son. We won't be seeing them again. They were angry at you, weren't they? That's why we had to leave. They was just good men who turned bad. I'll explain it to you one day. And what does that make you? I guess I'm a, a bad man who tried to be a good father. I don't know. Every man has a right to change. A chance of forgiveness. There's the ranch. Come on. Let's see if we can find... John Marston. Now, there's a face I thought I'd never see again. They'll have our public servants in Blackwater sent you back on another homicidal errand to protect and save us from Lord only knows what. Thankfully not, sir. I was hoping you might still be able to sell me some cattle. My boy, it would be a pleasure. Bonnie's out in the crowd now. She'll be more than happy to help you. <laughs> Take care now, Mr. McFarland. Good luck. I said I'd be back when this was all over, Miss McFarlane. After the barn fire, you remember? Of course I remember. I just didn't believe a word of it. So, you've come for some cattle? Yeah, I'm finally starting up my farm again. Or trying to, at least. You'll be fine. You've been taught well. Come on, then. settled our differences. Go! Hey! So, is this your boy? Yeah! Say hello to Miss McFarland, Jack! Hello? Ah, the arrogance of you. He gets a little fur on his lip and he thinks he knows best all of a sudden. <laughs> Must take after his father. Come on! Well, I think. We haven't had much time to talk yet. Whoa! Looks like you got him under control. I best get back to Paul. Nice to see you again, Miss McFarland. And thanks for oh, everything. Funny, you don't. All right, Jack. Let's get him through the river. Good job, son! 
Son, just lead them straight up the hill towards home. Will do, Paul. Look right. Stay back, son. I'll hold him off. That's all up. Jack, wait there, I'm coming. Whoa! Come on. You all right? You're not hurt, are you? No, I'm fine, I'm fine. I, I wasn't scared, honest. Sorry you had to see that, son. Those men won't be stealing from anybody else. All right, let's round up the stragglers and get moving. Whoa. by the stable. There you go. Did a good job, son. Nice shooting. Thanks, Paul. Make a rancher of you yet.
What you cooking? Same thing I've been cooking the past 15 years with the hope of poisoning you. Ain't working so well. <laughs> Not yet. Be honest, though. Tastes bad enough to kill a man. I never was much of a cook, but I did try to be a good wife. And you have been. <laughs> Given what we was and what we came from, I think we've gone and done OK. I look at Jack. I look at him, and I think we've been blessed. Maybe he can be something more. He's a good kid. He can be whatever he wants to be. He ain't going to be no frontier gunslinger killing and running those gang, though. <laughs> that way's over. Railroads and government and motor cars and everything gone and done away with all that. And he ain't going to marry no orphaned working girl running with a bunch of hucksters, neither. If he meets one like you, I hope he'll marry her. <laughs> Stop. For an illiterate gunslinger, you sure know how to make a girl blush. <laughs> God damn, Crows! John! You have got to go deal with them? They've broken into the silo again and are eating all the corn out from it. Of course, my angel. Wait. Get out of there! All right, all right. Go on! Scat! Shh. Get out of here! Sorry, but you must. Finally. Now about that stew. John, we got a telegram from some lady friend of yours, a Bonnie something or other. Something you ain't telling me? Bonnie McFarlane. She's a friend. Mm. Saved my life when I went after Bill and nearly got myself killed again. Oh, and now you two's in the habit of sending each other letters. How very nice. It weren't nothing like that. What's it say? I don't know. I can't. Well, you know I can't read. Give it here. You read that thing out loud? I ain't hiding nothing. Dear Mr. Marston, stop. Need corn sacks, stop. Emergency, stop. Weevils and moths ate entire county supply, stop. Can you help? Not exactly the most romantic request now, is it? I guess not. She saved your life, you say? Yes, ma'am. Well, then you're gonna have to help her and her family out. We've got a plentiful supply of corn sacks over near the silo. About the one thing Uncle didn't manage to have stolen while we was gone. OK. Hurry back, John. And John, what's she like? Uh, you know, a little bit like you, I guess. She's a woman in a man's world. Maybe I should meet this McFarlane woman. 
What are you waiting for? We better hurry. I don't think I can let you go off again without me. Fair enough. I'm glad of the company. You only had to ask. Ask? I was waiting for you to ask me. I thought you'd want to keep an eye on the boy. Oh, while well, you were off reporting with cowgirls in the next county? I don't think so, John Marston. You only just got home. That Jack's seen enough of me for a lifetime. So, is she married? This Bonnie McFarland? No. What does she look like? I don't know. Pretty normal, I suppose. Normal? What? Normal like me? No. Normal as in two eyes, mouth, nose, that kind of normal. Besides, ain't no woman fine as you. A little flattery. Now we're finally getting somewhere. If you find yourself in a hole, the first thing to do is stop digging. Another pearl of wisdom from John Marston. I sure do miss those. I never took you for the jealous type, Abigail. I ain't jealous so much as curious. You heard what she wrote. It's just some corn. She saved my life, and she was decent enough to me, so I owe her this much at least. How did she save your life, anyway? She found me half dead on the side of the road, and she took me to the doctor. Most folks would have left me there. Half dead? From what? Bill didn't take so kindly to me visiting on him now. Bill never did like surprises. How was he? Same as he was when we left. Angry and dumb. Taking his revenge out on the world. People down there was really scared of him. Of oh, Bill? You gotta be kidding me. He was only frightening if he was afraid of dumb fools. Bill worked so bad, but when Dutch went crazy, Bill took it hard. For a while, we all thought we'd found something right. A better way to live, but it was just a lie. So you saw before they did. Maybe. But they was still kind of a family. A family that left you for dead. You knew the truth, John. And they hated you for it. Where did they take you? Who? Those government bastards. Where did they hold you and Jack? I ain't sure. They kept their eyes covered there and back. Can't have been too far from here, though. They treat you right? It ain't the first time I've had a gun to my head, John. You're forgetting your marriage proposal. Very fun. No, they learned pretty quick what would happen if they laid a finger on me. You came. Thank you so much. We lost the entire harvest. Miss McFarland, I'd like you to meet my wife, Abigail. Oh, ain't you quite the gentleman all of a sudden. It's a pleasure to meet you, Mrs. Marston. Likewise. Thank you for saving my husband's life and for teaching the miserable goat some manners, among other things. I didn't teach him anything. I know better than to try to change a man. You should meet my father. Oh, people can change, Miss McFarland. John and I have to believe that more than anybody. This is a decent first harvest for you, John. You should be proud. That's good land you got there. How are you feeling, Mrs. Marston? From what your husband told me, it must have been awful for you. I've been through worse, and I knew he'd be back before too long. He can't cook a meal to save his life. Abigail, in my darkest hours, when I was most homesick, just the thought of one of your rat meat stews kept me pushing forward. Well, about as amusing as a weeping saddle sore, ain't he, Mr. Farland? If you're gonna start yammering about women's work, John, I'd say you might be in the wrong company. I'd say so, too. I never felt so outnumbered. Well, you always wanted to be a rancher. 
Ranger. I'd have thought she'd be just your thing. The perfect rancher's wife, if I ever saw one. I already got a rancher's wife. I'm only teasing. I like her. And I'm glad she saved your life. Yeah, man. 